Hi guys! How are you? How is everyone doing? My name is Liz and you are watching Liz in her world of books. Today I'm gonna show you my completely delusional yellow book TBR for May. I have 13 books in this pile. I know I'm never, never gonna get through all of them, especially because I have so much work to do um, in May and in June. And I still want to get to all of them. So this is basically you getting to see how delusional a small part of my brain is because, yeah, never get a, gonna get through all of them. But still, I want to show you all of the books I would like to get to. Um, one of them is War Paint. This is a library copy, as you can see, and I have to return it. This is why I have to read it. Um, this is the story of Elizabeth Orne and Hedina Rubenstein who were both pioneers in when it came to makeup for women and um, the rivalry that arose between them. So makeup for me personally is really fascinating because it's now um, an industry that's completely dominated by men as far as I know. And in the beginning it was really about women making products for women. And I think that is pretty fascinating and it also is a reflection of um, women and how they were supposed to look, which I think is always a bit fascinating. So this is one of the books I have to get to. <laughs> um, another book I would really love to read is Rafik Shami's A Handful of Stars. Um, I hope this has been translated into English because he's such a wonderful writer. Rafik Shami um, is originally from Syria, um, but he came to Germany, I think, in the early 80s late 70s, something like that, to um, finish his chemistry degree and he ended up being a wonderful writer um, who is a fantastic storyteller. I went to one of his reading ones and it was one of the most magical nights you can imagine. Um, so Rafik Shami is a, one of my earliest uh, memories of literature because we used to have a cassette by him. And back then, it was just a, like a fantastic painting of the Orient, basically, on the cassette and no picture of him. And because he has such a wonderful voice and such a way um, with words, I always imagine him as this like dashing Aladdin-type young man. And then I realized that he's um, like a dad with a mustache. Like he's, he's cute, but he's not, like in a teddy bear way. Um, so this is the story of a young baker in um, Damascus and he is writing in his diary about all of the things that is happening uh, that are happening around him and um, I think this is like small stories within a larger story which he Rafik Shami does so well um, can't wait to get to this one um, the next book I've already started reading a little bit back in January and that's Nick Hornby's Just Like You. So Just Like You tells the story of Joseph and Lucy who couldn't be more different. So Joseph I think is 19, he's a black man um, who's starting to date and figuring out dating and not having that much luck with it. And Lucy is in her late 30s, um, just recently divorced and I think she's a single mom, like polar opposites. But um, when they meet in a butcher's shop in North London, I don't know, there's a really strong chemistry between them. And I think uh, that they uh, strike up a relationship and it's about the question if uh, two people who are so different can actually make a relationship work. I personally really like Nor Nick Hornby's writing. I loved About a Boy, which I think is his most famous book. Um, but I also really like Juliet Naked, um, which he wrote a couple of years, um, probably a, two decades later, like a decade later. Anyways, it's also a really good book. Also yellow, actually. And um, so I have high hopes for this one. It's a bit of a lighter read, which I think you need every once in a while. Um, one book um, that I also would wish to really get to is Andrea Levi's Fruit of the Lemon. As you know, if you've been following me for a while, I really love Andrea Levi and I'm currently reading my way through um, my book collection of hers. And this is the story of Faith uh, Jackson, who has 
um, quite a strained and at the same time really loving relationship with her family who are really lovely but overbearing at the same time and one day the family says you know what we're just gonna move back to Jamaica I think they live in London um, because you are supposed to know your roots you, you're supposed to know where you come from and Faith is just completely overwhelmed with with that move and it's a culture clash and for her it's just a foreign country um, but that, then she meets her aunt uh, Coral who doesn't only tell her the story of her own family but also of Jamaica and this door to this really rich Jamaican culture opens up for uh, Faith and I think that's how she feels like she belongs. Excited for this one. Another book that I've already started to read because I am reading it for um, the University Book Club that I attend is Tommy Orange's There There. It's bloody fantastic. If you want to read a really good book, start reading There There. So There There um, follows 12 different Native American characters um, who live in the present day and how they all deal with being Native American basically and the struggle that that means um, and the discrimination that falls um, because of that. Um, it follows these 12 characters, how they all deal with that and I think it's going to culminate into one story. So this is like a short story collection um, where you revisit the characters um, in chapters by from a different perspectives but also by um, chap in chapters um, where you revisit the character itself. Um, if you are unsure if this is your jam, just read the first chapter. I swear to God, the ending of the first chapter hit me right in the gut. Like it's so powerful um, and so, I don't want to say emotional, but hard hitting and it's really, really gorgeous writing. I can't recommend this enough and I can't wait to finish this book. Another book that I want to get to that I haven't gotten to because um, it hasn't arrived yet. Uh, it took ages for the bookshop um, to actually deliver this book and it's going to arrive tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, and that's the Removed by Brandon Hobson. Uh, this follows a Native American family um, who lost their teenage son to police brutality and it's the story is I think steeped into Cherokee um, storytelling and tradition and myths and um, how each of the characters within the family deal with gr grief and losing their son in such a horrible way. Um, I think this is going to be a really nice buddy read um, to Tommy Orange's Is There There because it's I think these stories um, are gonna interconnect. So the last couple of books were pretty serious, um, are gonna probably be a bit more of a tough read, so I want to pick out another pick-me-up and that's Laura Lemon's Life in Pictures. I'm so sorry if you hear the children screaming outside. It's a really sunny day and yeah, we have a lot of children where we live. Um, this is a book by Emma Straub and uh, the storyline of this book really reminds me of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and this follows Elsa Emerson who was born in 1920 um, to really poor parents I think and she just wants to get out of um, that really poor life and wants to become a famous actress. Uh, this book, as far as I understood it, um, describes her rise to fame and the hardships um, that she has to endure for it. I think this is going to be an easy read, um, but that's still going to be a good one, I hope. One uh, non-fiction book I want to get to is uh, Text Me When You Get Home by Kaylin Schaefer. So women have been told that we are unable to feel real friendship, we are like too catty and we, um, I don't know, we, we just are unable to feel this deeply. And uh, Kaylin Schaefer um, tells the truth basically by showing that it's not so and uh, interviews uh, lots of different women about 
what female friendship has meant to them um, and she collects stories about best friends and I think this is such a wonderful thing to describe in uh, to describe because it's it personally like for me personally like female friendship has played such an important role ah oh, the children are just horrible sorry um, <laughs> um, female friendship has played such an important role in my life and I hope that this book um, is everything I hope um, it to be. Um, one of the books that I got for my birthday was Olive um, by Emma Gannon. This is a book that I really wanted to have and that my sister gave me for my birthday. This is the story of Olive, as the title says. Um, and it's, uh, she I think is in her mid to late 20s um, and she still isn't sure what she wants in life and is still figuring things out and I think with time her friends settle down they have babies and um, Olive I think is also gonna get a grip on her life but one thing she knows is that she doesn't want to have children and I think that her surroundings um, don't deal with that as well as she does I think this is what the book is about I could be wrong um, I personally don't want to have children I've never wanted to have children I, I hope that this is a positive portrayal of a woman like me, basically. One of the books, like, the most important book for me this month, and the book that I definitely want to get to, like, no matter how scrammed I am for time, I definitely want to read this one book, and that's Mediocre, The Dangerous Legacy of a male, white, white Male America by Ichioma Olu. Um, she's a fantastic writer. Um, her first nonfiction book, So You Want to Talk About Race, has um, been has gotten a lot of attention, rightfully so, because it's fantastic. And um, this, I think, is her second nonfiction book, and it's what the title describes. It's about how um, white men in America have gotten really successful by being completely me mediocre, and how dangerous um, that's that is to tell men you don't have to be extraordinary to be really successful. Um, you already are extraordinary by being white and male. And um, how that cult... Um, does this, doesn't this remind you of Trump? Like, it's so lovely how they made this cover. I think it's one of the best covers of a nonfiction book ever. Um, but yeah, I think Trump is basically what describes her prem the premises of this book. This is, yeah, I don't think I have to say anything more about this. I already know this is gonna be a five-star fantastic book and I can't wait to get to this. Um, one book I've heard so many good things about is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abidare. This is a story of a young girl who uh, lives in Nigeria and she gets married to a really old man. She's a third wife and um, she endures a lot of hardship, I think. Um, she is living a really tough life and it's about her finding her voice, um, her louding voice and fighting for her life and have like having a fulfilled life um, and this is supposed to be so good and I can't wait to get to this one as well. The last of my yellow books, um, but not the last book in my TBR, is A Net for Small Fishes by Lucy Chago. This is a story that plays out in 17th century England um, and it's the story about two women who are part of the Jacobean court and one of them, I think, is in danger of being um, sentenced to death um, by beheading or by the news. Like, it's a bit of a dangerous time, apparently. And how the friendship of um, these two women, or is it love? I don't know if they're lovers secretly or friends. I'm gonna go with friendship because I think they're friends. Um, and it's about how friendship between women and that ties in really nicely to text and when you get home, um, plays such an important role and can save women's lives. So this was my yellow TBR um, for May. One more book I want to get to that's not yellow, but that's actually gold or 
and or black is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bodogo. I hope I have pronounced her name correctly. Uh, this is the first book in her Krisha Universe series and uh, this has been recently adapted to a Netflix series and I really want to watch the Netflix series. It looks so good. Um, but before I watch any movie or series that's based on the book, I'm going to read the book. Um, so this is definitely a book I'm going to get to. I mean, look at this. It's so beautiful. This is the collector's edition. This was definitely a cover by, I'm not going to lie. And on the inside it has this like beautiful picture and it's really well done. The whole book is, is really well done and so, so beautiful. So this is going to be... A joy to read I think. Um, I don't know what this is about actually. I think this is like um, a universe where there's like a dark area and the main character is like a light bringer who can defeat the darkness. I don't know. This is a YA book. It's been a hot minute since I've read a, a YA book. I used to enjoy them but now I have so many books that I want to read more than these books and um, yeah I hope this is as good as uh, the trailer from Netflix makes it out to be um, so would love to read this one so yeah that's my completely unrealistic TV yellow book TBR for May let me know what uh, books you would like to, uh, to read in May is there like one book like for me it's mediocre that you really really want to get to no matter what let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!